So position is pretty simple. We're going to describe position as where an object is at a single point in time. For example, we might say the position of this calculator is on the desk, but the calculator could be any place on this desk. If we want to be more specific, we could say something like the calculator is on the left side of the desk. This is sort of how we're used to describing position in everyday life. As another example, here's a flag attached to a flagpole. How would we describe the position of the flag? Well, here we might say the flag is up, or here we might say the flag is down. Again, this is how we would normally describe position. But in physics, we need to be extremely specific about where things are. The laws of physics deal with exact positions and exact times. We can't plug things like up or down or the left side of the desk into our physics equations. So how do we be more specific? Well, we use numbers. If we were to hold up a tape measure so the end is at the bottom of the flagpole, we can measure exactly where the flag is by using numbers. And since all objects have some length or width, we'll need to pick a point on the object to measure. Let's measure from the middle of this flag. Now, instead of saying up or down, we can more precisely say the flag is four feet from the bottom, or the flag is two feet from the bottom. Now, we're describing the exact position of the flag on this flagpole. Also, notice how we're measuring the position of the flag relative to the bottom of the flagpole, where the position would be zero. We always have to measure position relative to some point. What if we measure the position of the flag from the top? Now, the top of the flagpole has a position of zero, and if the flag was in the same position as it is on the left, now we would say the flag is four feet from the top. Now, since the flag can only move up or down this flagpole in a straight line, we're measuring position along one dimension. We can describe the position of this flag by using only a single number, like four feet. One-dimensional motion, or linear motion, is what we'll be learning first. Let's use a car driving along a flat, straight road. Just like we held a tape measure up to our flagpole to measure the position of the flag, we're going to use this number line to show the position of the car along the road. In physics, we represent the horizontal position of an object using the variable x. Position could have any unit of length or distance, such as inches, feet, miles or kilometers, but we'll be using the SI unit of position, which is meters, or lowercase m for short. As a reference, one meter is equal to about 3.3 feet, or about one yard. So, let's say the car starts at a position of 5 meters, but then it drives to a position of 15 meters. This is what we call displacement. Displacement is the change in position of an object. Here's our equation for displacement. The way we actually calculate displacement is the final position minus the initial position. So what was the displacement of the car? The initial position, or xi, is 5 meters, and the final position, or xf, is 15 meters. From our equation, we see that the displacement is the final position minus the initial position. So in our case, that would be 15 meters minus 5 meters, which gives us 10 meters. So when the car drove forward, its displacement was 10 meters.